Well, well, well. Who thought this would be the case? Team World Win Labour Cup 2022. No one gave them a chance. No one. Whoever said that Team World were going to win, I don't believe you. Uh, they win their first ever Labour Cup with John McEnroe heading up, of course, the team as captain. And you know what? It was a really exciting year. And personally, this wasn't the strongest team world, I think. You know, they're missing someone like a Kyrgios and a Pelka. Isner as well as regular in doubles. For Team Europe, they had close to full strength. Now, I know, of course, Federer and Nadal uh, you know, only played one match as the doubles. I get that. But still, given the quality in that team, it's an almighty effort from Team World. An incredible victory to, that has been pulled off. We'll break it down, of course. I'll boast a bit about how I was there. Uh, not today, but yesterday to see Novak Djokovic in action in sublime form as well against Francis Tiafo. And what does this mean? Well, not too much. It's an exhibition. There's no ATP points up for grabs, but it does affect people's head to head. So that's quite cool. Uh, and some players, you know, will take some good feeling from this tournament and probably project it throughout the rest of the year. Uh, if not into 2023. <sighs> I mean, a lot of people were saying about how Labour Cup needs to be changed so that Team World actually have a chance. Well, they just completely flipped the script and said, you don't need to be talking about that because you know, we're going to go and win it. Before we get into it, though, remember to hit that like button and do subscribe if you are new. If you're listening on a podcast platform as well, do leave a rating or review. And of course, subscribe uh, to the channel it really does help us out. Thank you so much for your support. Let's work backwards then. So the last match uh, which was played, of course, Kasper Ruud and Taylor Fritz was cancelled because they didn't have to play it because Team World in the end won 13-8. Sitsipas and TFO. Sitsipas blitzing him in the first set 6-1 and then TFO took an almighty important second set tiebreaker 13-11, a real battle was 8-4 up in the championship tiebreaker. Bit of, bit of nerves, bit of tightness. And Sitsipas came back to 8-7. Took it in the end, 10-8 TFO after going 9-8 up. So, look, a really, really, really good performance from TFO. And he follows up beating Sitsipas at Wimbledon. It was last year uh, with beating Sitsipas this year at the Labour Cup. And... It was, you know, a very, very cool moment. Dropping on the floor, on his back, Team World, rushing the court. And I have to say, uh, you know, look, I am the day. It's on a Grand Slam. It's not a, a ranked tournament, but it's so fun. It's got this great competitive energy, positive competitive, competitive energy about it. And it is similar to like a Ryder Cup in uh Golf, which for anyone that watches golf knows what a big deal it is in golf. So we're working backwards. TFO being Sitsipas was a great victory. But the one for me that really stands out from the day is Felix Auger Aliasim beating Djokovic. I'd just seen Djokovic yesterday absolutely dismantle Francis TFO. I mean... Djokovic was seeing like a beach ball. He even said after, you know, a great way to come back onto the tour because he thought he played really, really well. And he was in full flow. Absolute destruction of the American. Comes up against Felix, who, yeah, you know, has caused Djokovic some issues in the past, but not really, you know, being someone who you'd expect to beat him. No two tight sets at Rome, I think it was this year. He got revenge though, Felix, winning 6 3 7 6. And I think the tiebreaker was what was so impressive. He was a break up in the second set, managed to just mentally stay dialed in after getting broken back. And I have to say, it's a real, real boost for Felix. Of course, the team are, but especially for Felix now going forward, because he'll know and also believe that he can beat anyone on tour, including a Djokovic and a Dahl on our crowds, etc. So, you know, watch out to see how he gets on for the rest of the year and also 2023. And then, of course, in the doubles today as well, we had Team Europe versus Team World. And uh, 
again, Team World winning that one, 2 6 6 3 10 8 in the championship tiebreakers are very, very tight. And Jack Sock has won a lot of games, of course, in the doubles, especially. Uh, so he uh, will be happy, and I'm sure everyone will be raving about him from a doubles aspect. Uh, from the singles aspects, though, I think Felix Orgelius, well, just a general overall MVP, if you want to call it, award most valuable player, probably goes to Felix for me. Francis TFO is very close, uh, but that's kind of how I see it. The courts were extremely slow, by the way, when I was watching yesterday, and it did, I think, lead into some really cool rallies and really entertaining rallies. But in saying that, you then need to make sure that the styles are matched correctly. And for example, Murray Dimoner was not matched correctly. Too similar. A lot of pushing around. Um, just, you know, a lot of exchange from the back of the court uh, for long periods of time. No one's really able to hit through the court between those two players. So that was difficult for them as well. The other, I guess, factor is that on Federer's farewell, Federer and Nadal, of course, had a match point. They didn't take it. They ended up losing that match. That can also be a difference as well. I know it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's an exhibition, but it's just interesting to look back on to see, you know, did they maybe miss a trick there? And uh, you would have expected Federer and Nadal Saturday evening, but instead they played Friday evening, I think probably because of Rafa as well. So he could get home quickly, as of course his wife is expecting. So is there is there much else to say? Not really. I mean, just an incredible event when I was there. You know, the atmosphere, the kind of graphic uh, representation or graphic, you know, presentation even was you know impeccable for sure. And it was so much fun. And I'll, of course, everyone knows that I've been because I've been posting a lot of tennis shorts on points throughout that day uh, but what i would also like to do is pretend well not potentially this this week is also do a video focused on novak Djokovic and what makes him tick what makes him so good after watching him live what are my findings from it and then i'll hopefully be able to integrate some clips into there as well which might be quite cool that's all from me thank you so much guys for tuning in do appreciate it remember to hit the like button and subscribe and generally or genuinely i've very much enjoyed this year's labor cup and of course a, a swan song for roger federer but it was a highly entertaining uh you know tournament and i can't, can't complain about how it's gone because the fact that we've had team old win as well now is uh is great for the sport because it'll give those guys a lot, a lot of confidence after getting some uh real beat downs the last few years Okay, that's all from me. Thank you so much, guys. Remember to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much.